everyone. Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you how you can use ggplot in order to do some advanced non-parametric regression. So let me give you an example. I'm going to introduce this library, smooth. ggpub r is only to summarize everything in a single plot and of course ggplot. So I'm going to create a data set. So let's take 120 points. And here I'm going to span time between 0 and 3.5 pi squared, divided by 2, sorry. And then I'm going to create three classes, three factors, A, B, and C. And I'm going to introduce the different functions for each factor. So here I have the sine of t, minus 0.5, the sine of this class. And remember, when you transform a class to numeric, A is going to be 1, B is going to be 2, and C is going to be 3. So basically here I'm, I'm using different combinations of signs, okay? And now I'm going to add some noise, a random distribution with zero mean and, and error or standard deviation 0.33, okay? So now I create a data frame. You can see that the first variable is called predictor, which is time, then the output, and then the class, which is going to be the factor in this problem, okay? Okay, so let's start simple. Uh, let, let me summarize a little bit what ggplot is doing. So first I, I want to create a canvas. So ggplot basically creates a, an empty canvas with the data that I have created, and I'm going to assign x to the first predictor, so the variable predictor, sorry, y to the output, and the color is going to be the class, okay? So this command alone is not doing anything, just si simply creating this, this empty canvas. The scale is proportional to the value of the predictors. You can see that the predictor goes from zero to whatever, and the output from minus two to two, more or less, okay? If I now add this geom point, basically what I'm saying is, Take this information, this aesthetics inside ggplot and create some uh, scatter plot. And now you can see the data color with different, uh, in different, uh, different ways. If I replace this by line, for instance, just as an example, and I run this again, I have the same sort of plot, but instead of using circles, I'm using uh, uh, lines, straight lines. Okay. Okay. And now the magic of ggplot. What I'm doing here is that I'm going to create uh, a simple linear regression and this is created with this layer, with this uh, geometric layer, which is called GM smooth, and the method is going to be linear regression. So if I run this, you can see now that I have different regressions for different factors and, and ggplot is really smart and, and knows that this is a factor. So basically what I'm doing here is, is the same as typing this one. So output as a function of predictor, sorry, predictor plus class using data, okay? And as you can, let, let's take a summary here. And if you do this, you can see that basically I'm, I'm factorizing, creating dummy variables from, from the class. So class nothing would be A, class B would be B, and class C would be C, okay? So basically here I have different, in, different slopes and different intercepts, okay? Another uh, what I'm going to do is split this in three different plots, and this is what Facet Grid is doing. So now I run this command, and if I do this, basically I'm assigning the ggplot to a variable. If I want to show the variable, I can print it. So here we have so three plots for factor A, B, and C, and three straight lines. Of course, th this was the combination of two signs, and this is not going to be fitted properly with a straight line, but this is the first type of, of regression, okay? Let's do a quadratic regression. The syntax is the same. So create the canvas, create the dot plot, and then smooth use a linear regression, but now my formula is going to be a polynomial of degree two, and then I split everything in a different panel. So let's do this, and here we go. So this is a parabola, as you can see here. And the fit is not good enough, but you can see that this is slightly better than before. Let's do this with a cubic, now the polynomial of degree three and things uh, starts to be better. Okay, so now, of course, this is not a cubic, this is a sign, uh, actually the combination of two signs, but it's working pretty, pretty nicely, okay? Now let's do some Lois regression. Remember that Lois meant that we are using uh, different points locally, weighting the points which are nearby the point that I'm trying to interpolate with a higher weight, and I'm kind of connecting those linear regressions. So let's do this. I'm going to print gg.low. And here we go. You can see this is straight, uh, let's say straight sticks. And I'm basically interpolating those sticks. Of course, this is non-parametric anymore, so we don't know what is this. This is not exactly 
a, a cubic or this is not anything actually this is just the concatenation of these sticks but you can see that visually is telling us that this is not linear and this is some something that we can use for exploratory analysis now let's use some splines i'm going to use natural splines of degree to two degrees of freedom just with two knots and here we go so this is better than a parabola you can see here because i'm not i'm not using a parabola i'm using a couple of splines interpolated by a parabola and i have two knots and this is a natural spline that meant that i have a straight line here a straight line there and in between between the two knots would be somewhere like around here probably and have this parabola so this is capturing better the the, the shape of this nonlinearity. let's do the same with three knots and here we go and this is again much better these are natural splines uh, so recall that so this is going to be linear at the ends so i have a straight line here a straight line there three nodes means i probably have one here here and there because the, the data is uh, equally distributed everywhere so now probably i have a polynomial of degree three here and another one here okay so this works pretty nicely and now let's do the same but in, instead of using natural spline let's use b splines which are not constrained at the borders and of course you can see that now instead of having a straight line as before remember go back so this is a straight line this is not a straight line anymore so this is a cubic polynomial again i'm capturing slightly better okay what happens if i use let's say 30 knots then things get crazy with natural splines i still have this constraint of using a straight down the border but the problem is that because i have so many knots i'm trying to to use so many uh, cubic polynomials and the, the fit is really bad and what about the same with b splines things are even worse because of that because i have not no constraint at the borders so one of the messages of my previous videos was that uh, increasing the number of knots is not good necessarily because you're uh, exploiting somehow the ability to generalize outside and now let's put all together so let's create a bigger plot so i'm going to increase this graph and I'm going to use GG Arrange, and here we go. A summary of all the methods in the video. So in the end, ggplot in, in this in this case, let me expand this a little bit. Okay, here. So ggplot is not meant for quantitative analysis, but for exploratory analysis, you have a good insight. So basically, you can see in a couple of uh, with a couple of comments, I would use linear to see if this is linear or not. Lowest to have a grasp of how this is working and now play a little bit with natural splines with different number of splines for instance natural spline with 3 and 30 splines in order to see if this is complex enough if natural splines 3 is good enough like in this case that means that i have three nodes there probably the cubic interpolation is going to be good and now i can go back and, and instead of using linear i can use cubic so this is again it's exploratory but you can have a good idea of, of how your model is behaving